This morning we will be starting our first live session and it's going to be something that we'll be doing very often. Today being the first of its kind, I'm so much excited and I'm so much glad to meet you, my cherished audience. Um, I'll get to be explaining principles and theories behind the practical lessons. We'll as well be doing practical lessons in this live series where you get to ask questions, live questions, and I'll get to provide answers. We'll be doing, as I already mentioned, practical lessons live on camera as I'm doing currently. And so it promises to be very educative, very informative, and we'll learn together, we'll share knowledge together. Let's jump into today's presentation. And so I want to turn to my slides. I'll be showing cameras, I'll be showing various gadgets that you've been using in your CCTV camera installation. And so let's get to today's lesson. And um, let me turn to my first slide that we'll be using in our presentation. And so today we are going to be looking at CCTV camera installation. But the first lesson today is about introduction to CCTV. And so, um, introduction to CCTV, in a nutshell, is a topic that is going to take you from beginner level when it comes to CCTV camera installation and we'll build it up to an advanced level where we'll get to be able to fix any kind of CCTV camera at all that you find. And so basically that's what is going to be today's lesson or that is where we're going to be starting from. And so I will um, quickly go ahead and um, go to my next slide so we get to see the lesson proper. Let's get to define CCTV. CCTV, as you may be aware already, is closed circuit television. Closed circuit television. And when you take CCTV, Every CCTV system comes with three basic parts that I have listed on the screen. Every CCTV camera system will have cameras, will have recorders or a recorder and then also display. I will be getting to explain all of this as we go along and I will be showing you each of these things. So it's not going to be just um, practice, it's not going to be just theory. We'll get to see all of these things one after the other all right but before we go on i want to entreat that if you have any comments or if you have any questions you can drop them in the comment section i'll be addressing them as well i'll be addressing your comments and questions about this very presentation okay so um it's time to demonstrate to you what the cameras are, what the recorders are, and what the display units are. And so, we'll, uh, I'll try to pan my camera so that I come to my table or my desk where I have cameras right here to show to you. I have on the table right here various cameras and I believe most of you would have already seen CCTV cameras and so it's not new. I have various cameras or various types of cameras on the table. As we move along we'll look at why the different shapes and then the different connectors. We'll get to see connectors on and all those stuff. But basically these are CCTV cameras which I believe everybody would have seen before. This is a camera, this is a camera as well and this is also camera. They are all cameras as you may already know. Now um, let's also look at the next thing which are the video recorders. You know um, CCTVs are not just supposed to capture images. They are supposed to be a means where you'll be able to record your, your videos. And so, to be able to record the videos that are captured, there's the need to have the video recorder or the CCTV video recorder. And here's an example of a CCTV video recorder. Let me lift it up. 
this is actually the back of it so let me turn the front of the recorder this is the front of the cctv video recorder as we move along we'll look at it into details we'll look at the dvi into details where we'll look at where the data is stored but basically this is how it looks the front does not have much it is the back that has most of the activity or is the at the back that most of the activity happens so at the back of a, CC, a typical cctv recorder as i'm holding you can see that there are various ports or connection ports at the back here and they are just all meant to be able to coordinate all your components of your cctv camera system as i've mentioned there are three main components of, of the cctv system there is the camp there are the cameras there are recorders and there are display units and the recorder is one of the most vital components because it is what sits in the middle of all your cctv system all your, your cameras and then even the display units are all connected into the recorder through the spots that are at the back of the recorder don't worry we'll look at what each of these spots stand for or what they do in the cctv camera installation we just mentioned that the CCTV system comprised of the cameras, the recorders, and then the display units. And so, how are all those units connected together? Basically, there are three modes of connection that you can find when, you, when it comes to CCTV camera installation. There are three modes of connection that you can find. Um, the first mode of connection that we will look at is um, cable connection. The cable connection, whereby the CCTV cameras, there are some that are connected using cables. There are some that you can find that also utilize what we call wireless connection. And then also there are some that use the Wi-Fi connection. The most common that you find is what we call the cable connection systems where you need to lay physical cables between your CCTV cameras and your CCTV recorders and then also the display units. There are also those cameras nowadays that you find in the system that use Wi-Fi or you can just connect those cameras to your phone directly and you get to control the cameras from your phone. There are also those that come with uh, wireless totally wireless connection where there is no no uh, physical connection those cameras they come as a pair or they come as a unit a whole unit whereby there is no need to lay any cable you do not connect them to your phone either but there are wireless connections that are established from factory to your cctv recorders through those cameras and so that's about the mode of connection will be looking into details the the way each of them are connected but this is just to give you a brief idea of the modes of connection of your cctv cameras to your cctv recorders and so that leads us to the next thing which has to do with the technology and evolution i call it technology and evolution technology and evolution because CCTV has evolved over time. You realize that CCTV, just like any other form of technology, has evolved over time. CCTV used to be just analog. There were analog systems that have gradually evolved to what we call digital systems now. But you realize that there are still versions of the analog CCTV that are still in the system. And we also have the digital systems that are also available and so i want us to have a good idea of what those two systems are as i mentioned analog cctv systems are still available and you'll be surprised depending on your jurisdiction you may be seeing analog cameras and you will not know that they are analog cameras there are features about analog cameras and there are features about digital cameras we will get into them in this uh, next slide and so that's about it the digital and 
analog evolution of CCTV. Let's look at what it is about. All right, I mentioned earlier on that every CCTV camera system must have the cameras as you would allude to. There should be recorders on which your cameras should be recorded or the camera videos should be recorded. And then also there should be a display unit, the mode of seeing what the CCTV camera system is capturing. And we've just added that all the systems need to be connected using cables. And that's how come I added cable as part of the CCTV setup. Let's get to look at the analog CCTV system. How do their cameras look like? How do their recorders look like? And how do their display units look like? I mentioned earlier on that the analog CCTV systems are still existent. And so I want us to delve a little bit into analog CCTV right now. How do their recorders look like? How do their cameras look like? And then the display unit. The display unit, you realize that we do not have much problem there because the display unit is a display unit. Whether the cameras are analog or not, the display unit doesn't really change much. I have a few cameras on the table right now. Now, to identify an analog camera, I will first show you the two types of cameras, then we will differentiate between which one is analog and which one is digital. These two cameras I'm holding look similar in terms of just the physical look. When you look at them physically, these two cameras which are very similar in look, but these two cameras are not the same types of cameras in terms of analog and digital. I was mentioning that this particular one here, which is also a normal camera, a camera that looks like this one, these two cameras are different. What makes them different? You realize that this particular one has an Ethernet connection port on its terminal. It has an Ethernet connection port in addition to the power connection port or the point through which power is fed into the camera. And then also we have an audio connection port. We'll talk about the audio connection port later. But basically, it has a power connection port and then also the Ethernet connection port for video connection. When you take this camera, which is also in the same shape as the first one, you realize that this camera has also the power connection port here and also has the video connection port, which is the B and C connection or the B and C port. This one that has the B and C, this camera having the B and C connector, it is what we call the analog camera. And this particular one, which has the Ethernet port. This port, the same kind of port that is used for computer networks, is what you find on cameras that are called digital cameras or IP cameras. So that is the basic difference between an analog camera and an IP or digital camera. And so I will want to select analog cameras here. This particular camera that you find here, the one I'm holding currently, it is an analog camera. Just a simple identification is the presence of the video connector, which is a B and C connector. So it's B and C connector. The B and C connector presence, let me say, is what makes it an analog camera. And of course, there's a power terminal as well and for the power terminal you find it on any kind of camera this is the reason every camera just like any kind of electronic device uses power to be able to function let me use the case of a radio set which is an electronic device 
its main function is to be able to give you sound or maybe radio channels but you need to first put in power it could be battery powered or electricity powered before you can have its function performed and so it is in the same manner that cctv cameras no matter the kind of camera it is whether it is an analog camera or an ip camera requires power to be able to function and so it is not the power terminal that determines the kind of camera it is it is the video connection terminal so any of these cameras that are on my table right now comes with a power connector and then also an ethernet connector or the video connection point so this camera that i am holding whose terminal i'm holding this particular camera you can draw the conclusion that it is a digital or an ip camera just for the presence of the ethernet connection port on this terminal and for the video as i mentioned you find it on any kind of camera because when i take this camera whose terminal is this it has a power terminal and also has a bnc connection port which is for the video connection into the camera or from the camera so it is an analog camera so that settles it the basic difference is the presence of their video connection ports digital cameras come with ethernet ports and analog cameras come with the b and c connection ports now um when it comes to analog cctv you realize that analog cctv systems have evolved to a point where there used to be various systems in the olden days or in the immediate past there used to be various kinds of um, analog cctv systems but the basic technology or the current technology of analog systems is what we call the ahd systems so we do not have any kind of older systems of um, ahd or analog cctv the modern or the latest version of analog CCTV systems that you find in the market today are what we call analog high definition cameras, AHD. You would have heard of AHD, but the presence of the HD in that name does not make it digital camera. So the latest version of analog cameras you find nowadays is what we call the AHD CCTV cameras. And the cameras that I showed you, these cameras that I have here, are all AHD cameras. This camera is an AHD camera. It is an analog high definition camera. And you realize that there are myths where people think that if you can view the CCTV camera on your phone or you can view it online, then it means that it's a digital camera. No. These analog cameras that I have here, in subsequent lessons, we'll see how to set them up and I'll show you how you can even link AHD or analog high definition cameras to the internet. You can view them on phone, you can view them on PCs, you can do anything at all with it because these are latest technology analog cameras. And so that is something you should note very well. Let's look at the next, uh, the next information I want to share. And so, okay, we have looked at the identity features already. That is analog cameras having B and C connection as their video terminals. And then also the IP cameras having the, B, the Ethernet port on their connection terminal. Now let's look at the, this fact. The reason for having all these various shapes of cameras. As I showed, we have so many shapes of these cameras. So I want us to look at the reason why there are diverse shapes of these CCTV cameras. So I want to uh, point to the cameras again so that you get to see. Let me explain the reason for all these shapes of cameras. All right, so um, here are the cameras. As you can see, um, I just enumerated that 
this is an AHD or analog high definition camera. This particular camera is an AHD camera because it has a BNC connector. And this particular type of cameras are called the bullet cameras or cameras installed in outdoor locations. By their shape or because of how they look, they are referred to as bullet cameras and they are mainly meant for outdoor purposes. Um, whether it's an analog camera or an IP camera, you'll find that these shapes are all bullet cameras. They are called bullet cameras. They are installed at outdoor locations. When you look at them critically, we realize that they are well sealed against moisture or rain. There's no way that moisture or rain will get access to these kind of cameras. And that's how come they are called bullet cameras or outdoor cameras. But when you do for this one, you realize that moisture or rain will easily get, get it damaged. And that is not how the manufacturer installed it or made it to be. So it is very important to ensure that bullet cameras are installed at outdoor locations and turrets or dome cameras are installed in indoor locations or locations where they are protected against moisture or rain. Camera resolutions. Camera resolution which is measured in megapixel or the MP. You realize that cameras come in various qualities in terms of how clear or the kind of picture quality you find on your CCTV camera. These cameras that I have with me here, I'll try to show the resolutions. Um, the camera can, can capture, I'm not sure it's uh, very clear, but this camera is a 2MP camera. That is a 2 megapixel camera. And so a 2 megapixel camera has a degree or the extent to which you can have your images. Unlike another maybe resolution of camera. This one is a 2 MP camera and this other one though is an IP camera is a 3 MP camera. You will find the resolutions on the name plates that you find on the camera. This particular one is a 2 MP camera. Okay, this particular one is a 3MP camera and this is a 2MP camera. The megapixel or the MP that I'm talking about is just how clear or how sharp the images of the camera will be. That is what the resolution is about. And so when you get a camera or if you are to purchase a camera, those are specifications you'll be putting across whether it's an indoor camera or an outdoor camera and then also the resolution is what determines the quality of your camera and currently you find cameras that are as even sharper as there are even uh, some cameras that have gone beyond 4k or the 8 megapixel remember 8 megapixel is the same as 4k video so if you find that they say a camera is 4k that is to say simply it is an 8 megapixel camera that is the quality of brightness or sharpness of your camera is rated as 4k or 8 mp and so that's another point to note about cctv cameras let's move on to the next one okay so um let me now go to CCTV video recorders. Remember, a CCTV recorder is essential to the CCTV setup because that is where the storage of your videos would, would be done. And so it's an important aspect of your CCTV camera system. I have on my table here, CCTV video recorder which is meant for analog CCTV installations and 
how you call CCTV recorders that are meant for analog CCTV is what we call the DVR. This is a DVR or the digital video recorder. That is what the DVR stands for, digital video recorder. This type of recorder has various features that identifies it and those features you will not find on a recorder meant for IP or digital CCTV systems. Now, the DVR identity, um, this is the front of the DVR in a way. This is the front of the DVR. The front just shows various um, indicators. For instance, uh, the first one uh, writes, written here is power, indicating power presence. We have the hard disk drive presence and then also network presence. So at the front, you don't normally have much information at the front of your CCTV video recorder. It is at the back of the recorder that you will find the detailed information, the detailed ports to which the system has. How do you identify the CCTV recorder meant for analog CCTV or AHD CCTV cameras? The first set of ports here, which I believe you can see, are B and C inputs on the DVR. These are what we call B and C inputs. And these are the points through which you can connect video into the DVR. Remember, the DVR stands as the central unit of your CCTV camera installation. And so every system or everything in a CCTV is mostly connected to the, the DVR. And so this is the point or these are the points where your videos are connected into the system. And when you look at it, the question is that if I have just four of these inputs or i have four of these connection points meant for connecting cameras then how can more than four cameras be connected into the system to explain this particular machine that i have here is a four channel dvr that simply means that this dvr is meant to receive only up to a maximum of four cameras and so there are other systems that come with larger number of inputs for video and so if you require a system or a setup that you need to have more than four cameras then you need to go for a CCTV video recorder that has that kind of capacity that your system or your requirements will be able to accommodate so this is a four channel DVR and the reason why I say it's a four channel DVR is because it has four BNC inputs through which you can connect video into this camera. And apart from the BNC inputs, let me jump to the display port. Here is a VGA port. A VGA port, let me show you to the camera. This is a port through which you can connect VGA. That is a, a graphical uh, interface, a video display the uh, video graphics adapter the kind of connector that you use for computers i have a sample here let me show to you the VGA. basically the the port that looks like a computer connection to a computer's monitor that is where you connect it so that you can display your dvr's output on a monitor that has the VGA connection. So this is the kind of cable that connects through that point where you can connect into this kind of cable. You can connect the DVR to a screen that has the VGA. Apart from the VGA port, there's also an HDMI connection port so that for modern screens that have the means through which you can connect the HDMI, you can use the HDMI to connect to TV screens. So you just plug 
an HDMI cable here and also plug to the TV screen that you wish to use for your CCTV camera display. Um, so now let me also talk about this port that I excluded. Uh, the right up here is audio out. The audio out that suggests that if you have cameras that come with microphone that will enable you to be able to record sound or pick sound from your cameras, you can connect a cable here to a speaker where you can hear the sound of the cameras audibly. So that's the reason for this kind of audio out um, port. There is also audio input ports on the DVR where if a camera has sound, it will give you provision to be able to plug in the sound from the camera into the DVR. This is a four channel DVR and so provision is made for four audio inputs into the DVR as well. And I was mentioning in my introduction that the DVR, which is the recorder for analog CCTV systems, is able to give you the ability to view analog cameras online. That is possible through the Ethernet port that is here. Through this port, in subsequent lessons, that's what we're going to use to be able to learn how to put the DVR online. So through a network cable plugged in here, you can connect internet into the DVR. So that you can put your cameras on the internet. So you can view the cameras on the internet. So that's about that. When it comes to the size of the DVR, I've already mentioned that this particular DVR that I have here is a four channel DVR because it has provision to carry a maximum of four cameras through these VLC inputs that are meant for connecting video into the, into the DVR. Remember, I mentioned earlier on that analog cameras have BNC video connection or BNC video terminal. And so you also find that the DVR or the digital video recorder also has BNC inputs through which you can connect your cameras into your DVR. And so that is that. Now, um, we haven't gotten to the system where, the point where we display the firmware of the DVR. But the DVR comes with a firmware already in it. The DVR comes with a firmware. The firmware is just uh, the software that, if you have already seen a CCTV screen before, you realize that you have the situation where the CCTV screen is divided into various segments. For example, with my four channel DVR, when we connect it to a screen and we look at the screen right now, you see that the screen will be divided into four parts or the four windows through which your cameras will be displayed. The firmware comes with the DVR from home or from the manufacturers. You do not have to do any upload of firmware onto this. The firmware comes with the DVR. By the time you, have, you know the capacity, this is a portal DVR. When you connect it to a screen, you already have the divisions of the four windows required to have your cameras. So you do not have to do any configuration to have that kind of to have that kind of uh, uh, windows to display your your cameras. Now, this system, I wish I had time that we just open this. The DVR, the DVR houses what we call a hard disk drive. A hard disk drive on which data or the video data, video from your cameras will be stored. Because this is the unit on which your cameras are recorded. The recordings are done into the hard disk drive. I will, uh, maybe in the next lesson, I will open up the system, the, the DVR, and show how you can install your DV or your hard disk drive into the the DVR to be able to take up the recordings. But note that the bigger the size of hard drive installed in the DVR, the longer the duration of 
recordings you can do. So you must choose your hard drive according to the volume of data you want to save or you want to record per time. But there's still a cap or a limit to the, uh, the size of hard drive you can put in a DVR. So it does not mean that you want a large number or a large duration of time. That is the number of days of video you can save. If you want longer duration, it is not open that you can go and take any size of hard drive. No, the manufacturers of the DVR have a specific limit which you can find in your DVR manual. That tells you the highest or the largest size of hard drive that you can place in your DVR. So it is not open like that. You need to refer to your manual to know the size of hard drive you can install in your DVR. But I assure you in the next lesson, I will show you the hard drive, how it is fully installed in the hard drive, into the, the DVR, sorry. I will show you how it is done. And so we'll continue so that we can um, accomplish our, the task that we want to do today. And so another information to share is that the DVR is the central unit of the CCTV system. Um, it's a central unit because when you take the DVR, every component in your CCTV setup connects to the DVR. The cameras, the display units, and even the interface for the connection of internet into the system so that you can view it online or on your on mobile or on computer comes into the DVR. So the DVR can simply be set as the central unit of your CCTV camera installation. Everything that sits in a CCTV setup is connected to the DVR. So by the time you know what connects to each of these inputs of the DVR, it should be easy to set up the CCTV camera system. So if I, may, if I show you how to, by the time we look at how to terminate the various cables that go into these ports that are on the, on the DVR, then we are almost there at being able to set up the CCTV. Very simple and very easy like that. There is no difficulty about it. That is just the, the process. So the DVR is a central unit of your CCTV camera installation. And it comes with the connection ports to which you can do your you can do your connections. I've already talked about the capacity of the size of your DVR. The capacity is the number of channels it has or the provision for connecting your um, your cameras. All right, so um, I would have loved to attend to viewer comments, but I think uh, there are difficulties with the, the viewer comment section. I'm so much sorry for the difficulties and challenges we've had in this first session, but in the next sessions, I promise to be able to resolve the challenges so we have a smooth transition. My target is that these lessons will be able to answer everyone's question so that everyone will be able to achieve his purpose of coming spending time and data to come and sit and watch these videos. I'm so much glad you came around. I'm so much uh, appreciative of your time. I pray that uh, next time everything will go on well so I will benefit maximally from this session. Thank you so much for being there. I love you. Bye-bye.